How can you integrate OpenAI, communication features, and organizational data into your apps to take them to the next level? Well, that's what this tutorial is all about. So my name is Dan Wallin. I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft, and I'm excited to introduce what this tutorial provides you as far as a learning experience. There's a lot you're gonna go through, services created up in Azure, working with code, working with prompts as far as prompt engineering and AI, and a lot more. So let's start off with a thought exercise. What are you focused on when building apps? And I think for most of us, you're gonna say something like the following. Well, I'm working on the front end, the back end, the business rules, the APIs, the database. Maybe you're doing cloud deployments or CICD systems, and the list goes on and on and on. And you'll notice that each of those responses was a technical response, which is a good response. That's what we do. But when was the last time you took a step back and thought outside of the box? So for example, when it comes to our focus, a lot of times we're splitting our focus across many different things. We have different context shifts. I can't tell you how many times I've dove into Outlook or Teams or some other tool to find something I need for the job I'm working on, only to come out you know, 15, 20 minutes later and realize I never found what I was looking for because I got sidetracked. Well, what if we can improve that for users? Or maybe communication is a big part of what you do and what your apps do. I recently had a scenario where a service person came and they had a tablet with an app that went back to headquarters, but they also had a phone to call back, take pictures, things like that. Why not just make that all available in the app? Make communication a lot easier for those cases where it's warranted. Or you're probably reviewing a lot of documents, writing documents, writing emails, and there's a lot of opportunity here with AI in particular to speed up that process and get you started more quickly. So if we put all those together, that's really what this tutorial is all about, is how do I improve these three main areas? So when it comes to, for instance, minimizing context shifts, what if we were to bring some of the data that users need right into the application where they're working every day? Or when it comes to communication, what if my app needs the ability to call out to a phone number? Or I need to send SMS or email messages? Well, we can obviously do that. And then when it comes to our writing, reviewing, really anything that involves text and documents, that's where AI can really enhance the process and provide users at least with a jump start. We'll talk more about that. So there's three main parts to this tutorial, assisting users with AI. That's gonna go through everything from setting up the resource to some of the pros and cons, and just because you can doesn't mean you should type scenarios, to using things like completions. We'll talk about what that is, how you would get started, and how you can write the code for your app. The other main topic is communication features, and there's three areas here. First off, you'll learn how to set up Azure communication services in the Azure portal. Then you'll learn how we can use some of those features like how do I make a phone call from my application or how do I send SMS or email messages. And then finally, there's also sections on bring organizational data into apps. And this gets into that context shifting. Why make the user go hunt for the document, the chat, the email, whatever, why not just bring that right where they work every day? Or if they're having to go to Teams to send a message to another channel in Teams, couldn't we just do that right from the app? And the answer is yes, we could do that. And we're gonna learn about things like Microsoft Graph, Microsoft Graph Toolkit, and some other features associated with those. So with that, let's jump into a demonstration of the app that'll be used throughout this tutorial. So first off, I wanna talk about the main parts of the app. There's gonna be a front end written with TypeScript that calls into a back end set of APIs. Now these APIs are gonna allow us to tie into Azure OpenAI, to integrate with Azure Communication Services and things along those lines. There's also a Postgres SQL database that's behind the scenes and that's gonna serve up some customer data, reviews and things along those lines. Now, as you go through this, the tutorial will walk you through cloning the project, setting up the resources in Azure and other areas, and everything you need to know, but let's walk through the app itself. So to run this app, there's three main parts, and let me show you that. We have the PostgreSQL database, we have the API server, and we have a client. So the client will load up in the browser, 
That'll call into the APIs, and those will then in turn call into the database, as well as some of the Azure services. Now, I've already launched the database, the server, and the client. So if we go on back, you'll see what the app looks like. I've logged in using Azure Intra ID, formerly known as Azure Active Directory, and that gives us that security angle. And then you'll see that I have a data grid. So it's a really simple line of business app, but just enough to allow us to try out those three areas of AI, communication, and organizational data. You'll notice right below the data grid, I have a custom query. Get the total revenue for all orders, group by company, include the city. So let's go ahead and run this. And what it's gonna do is send this natural language up to Azure OpenAI and convert that into SQL and then run it. Now this might set off a few warning bells for you, especially if you're a DBA. And this is gonna be one of those scenarios of just because you can doesn't mean you should. We're gonna talk about how you could implement this type of functionality, but in the tutorial, you'll also see some of the cons associated with this. Now, this one does handle things like SQL injection, but you're still running dynamic SQL queries and that could cause a problem with security. So this is one of those AI scenarios that yes, you can do it, but you really need to think this through before you would decide to do it. And that's one of the exercises we'll walk you through. Now, in addition to that, if I go to contact customer, I can email or send an SMS and I can actually generate the messages using Azure OpenAI. So I could say order is delayed two days. We can generate this. And what this will do is send that prompt up to Azure OpenAI and we get back a subject and an email. And we also get back a shorter version for an SMS message. Now from here, if I were to send the email or the SMS message, this would use Azure Communication Services. So that's another part of what you're gonna see in this overall tutorial. Now you'll notice in the upper right, I have a chat icon, and this is for bring your own data. Bring your own data is where we can upload our own documents and then chat against those using Azure OpenAI. So I don't expect this one to return anything because I know this document's not there, but let's do how can I install a clock? Because I do have a document for that. This is a document you'll actually have available for you in the tutorial. And there we go. We get a nice little summary back about how to install a clock and it's pulling out the relevant pieces from the document that's provided. Now, when it comes to communication, you've already seen you can send an email or SMS that AI helped with, but we can also come in and make a phone call directly from the app using Azure Communication Services. Now this is a fake number, but if you put a real one in, you can actually call that and have a full on conversation. So that's something else you'll learn about. Now the final part is organizational data. Oftentimes we're jumping out to our email client, to files, to Teams chats, whatever it may be. And we need to look up something that's related to what we're working on. What if we were just to bring that type of information right into the app itself? So here's an example for a Datum Corporation of two documents I have in OneDrive for Business. I'm just bringing those right in. The user can then click them to open it. Or we could bring in Teams chats related to that. Emails or calendar events. And there's a lot more you could bring in as well. If we go to Tailwind Traders, this has a few more Teams chats. And not only can we view the Teams chats here, but we can also send a Teams chat into a channel directly from the app so that the user can do their work and not even have to go over to Teams. So those are some of the core features, AI, communication, and organizational data that you're gonna learn about in this app. You can head over to aka.ms slash openai dash ACS dash MS graph, or just scan the code that you see here, and that'll take you to the tutorial. Now that you've seen an overview of the technologies covered, I hope you'll make the time to jump on in and go through these exercises.